Ja. Hello lovelies! Kan je zeggen? Hello lovelies! Hi! Lovelies! Hi! <laughs> Good job, baby. Hello! So, I guess this is the benefit of maternity leave. I finally get to do some videos for this channel. So this video is about how I prepare for postpartum, second time around, and having a toddler. I already kind of wanted to do this video, but I didn't want to promise it and then not deliver. And then on my previous video, <laughs> how I prepare for natural childbirth, some yeah. of you asked for this video in the yeah. comments, so I thought yeah. I should really do it. Plus, I thought it would be fun for me to do this together with you. I am putting together a couple of postpartum things today. So, as I said, I thought I could do it together with you. I already have a big box right here that uh, I've been filling up with stuff that is both for the birth and postpartum because we're going for home birth again <laughs> and um, which is if you don't know quite common in the Netherlands it's going to be a challenge filming with Noel down there but we're going to try as I was saying home births are very common in the Netherlands we have really really well trained midwives in this country okay so I'm trying to film but it's impossible with my chatty little man right here so I guess I'll have to try and film later on <laughs> so see you then ready to try again so hopefully what I do now is not actually awake Noel <laughs> because he is sleeping across the hole and you can hear everything pretty good here but uh, fingers crossed we ended up going to the store one last time to get a few more last minute things which was kind of stupid to do you know when you're hungry you shouldn't go to the supermarket right when you're highly pregnant and you're nesting don't go to the baby store <laughs> i probably bought stuff that i don't actually need well i might need it I do believe that this time around it will save you lots of trips because last time being a first time mom of course you're not always going to know what you're going to need and some women go one way that they buy absolutely everything on the list and double and even more and anything that's in the commercials and I'm on the other side I love a minimalistic lifestyle I'm like eh we'll see if we need that which meant that you don't have to go to store a couple of times. He didn't mind. He likes driving. He likes running errands. But this time, daddy, you got to be here. You got another big boy walking around as well. <laughs> now, I've got a couple of things that I want to share with you. And um, I'd say that the postpartum essentials that I want to share with you are focused at healing. Kind of makes sense, right? That's what I do. I think what I really missed out last time is preparing properly for a postpartum period. Yes, I did prepare quite well. There were a couple of things that I knew how to do homeopathically and um, in case milk wasn't coming in, etc., etc. But I wasn't aware of how important it was to get my sleep. I just assumed, eh, you can't get any sleep. And it was quite hard with Noel. And at the time, Jeroen also works across the country, meaning he'd have to get up in five, at 5 in the morning. And so I didn't want to wake him during the night, which meant that I was dealing with all the night stuff. And as you may already know, Noel was a terrible sleeper. He's doing great still, but a hundred times better. And uh, so I'd be up every 20, 40 minutes, maybe 60 if I was lucky, and he'd cry so much. And sometimes a lot of the times I was holding him in one arm, having him latched on one breast and then trying to pump the other just to get my milk going. But I think if I realized that what I really, really needed was rest and sleep to get the milk going, that would have helped so much. Also, I didn't really prepare well in advance for food. I think I did have a couple of ideas and Yudum did cook and my mom cooked, um, but my mom didn't live close by at the time and she was working still. 
as a flight attendant, which meant that she was away. Despite that, man, that woman did so much for us. So yeah, I think I am better in that department this time around because I do believe that the sleep is essential, 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 and it is possible to get your rest, especially when you live in the Netherlands and you're so lucky that postpartum, postpartum doula care is the norm. You just gotta make sure that you're planning well in advance and then make good use of that. And even if you don't live here, if you live somewhere else, I do think that it's possible to prepare really well in advance to make sure that you're not up too fast, that you are getting sleep, even if you have a very fussy newborn, and um, also to get enough nourishment. So those are the two things that I started off with. I highly, highly recommend um, this course that I did by a postpartum doula in the States, and her name is Karen, I believe. I will make sure to link this in. Uh, she has so many amazing resources on her website and articles that are all focused on postpartum healing and supporting moms, especially in places like the US where moms are expected to go back to work really quickly. And I thought that I had figured out quite a lot from her resources online and other resources and I was already pretty well prepared, but then I did purchase her course and oh my goodness, it was totally, totally, totally worth it, really. But her worksheets are absolutely fantastic um, to help you prepare for that time. She, she calls it preparing for baby moon and I love it because baby moon is always associated with going on a trip in advance and yeah, of course, if you have the opportunity to do that, that's great for your relationship and fun but I would invest in the postpartum baby moon period for sure. So with our history of sleep issues, you can imagine that a sleep strategy is big for us. So Jeroen is working mostly from home now, which is really convenient, but we also have an older toddler that doesn't always sleep great. He still sleeps with me as well. So that's gonna be challenging. So our big strategy is mommy goes back to bed until she's gotten her 10 hours of sleep. And basically with a newborn, you can imagine that you are up every few hours. So you're going to have to go back to bed frequently and try to sleep to get those hours. I don't know if it's gonna work out, if I'm not going to be too adrenaline rushed to actually sleep, but we're gonna try. And even if that means I don't get my full 10 hours or you know even eight would be amazing I think for this time period so even if I'm not ready for the day till noon that's fine this is the focus we're going to focus on this the second big thing that I have been focusing on is food as I said making sure that there will be enough nourishing food for me so that I can heal properly so that I am ready to go in a couple of weeks and to start picking back up some responsibilities as a mom of two and as a wife and a homekeeper and lastly of course as a business owner <laughs> and to make sure that my milk supply will be really good so that I can give everything that baby needs. So my focus will be caring for myself and for my baby and then my husband will be caring for a lot of the other stuff and mostly for Noel and for me and then we have the postpartum doula support and my mom nearby so we are in a very luxurious position I think so my mom will cook several times his mom will cook several times I finally found a meal service that has organic food and like good quality food so we'll be ordering several times from them and then I've prepared several freezer meals I was not a freezer meal fan but oh my goodness I've gotten on that bandwagon because I love my crock pot and my cousin and her parents and her husband gave this crock pot to us for our wedding and we had no money at the time. There was no way I would have been able to afford a crock pot at the time but it has blessed me so much. So Merlene, if you're watching, I still love this thing to pieces. I make my bone broths in there, etc., etc. And now I have made a couple of really great freezer meals from an ebook that was also recommended by this postpartum doula and I will link it in below. And these are finally meals that really suit my way of eating as well, which is the Western Price way of eating nourishing traditions. And I've eliminated some of the ingredients that don't sit very well with us. And I picked the meals that I really love. So we're going to have a Thai coconut chicken. We're going to have a rotisserie chicken. 
we're going to have a couple of vegetarian meals and um, all those freezer meals can just go into the crock pot in the morning the night before someone can ferment the rice for us or we can have potatoes with it and I was already getting hungry just making these things so I've got 10 meals of those so everything together I've got meals planned for three weeks three weeks people so uh, that is really great so then I decided I also need to make sure I have my lunches and my breakfast to make sure that I am feeding my body well so I've prepared breakfast for Noel and me for that same time period I've made some muffins that I really love waffles which again are also fermented so they're all a-okay with the nourishing traditions way of eating and my mom will make me some pancakes so covered and then I've also got my bone broths which I have put in some of the dinner recipes but they will also be a staple for my lunches the bone broths people those are amazing for healing because they give you the collagen to heal your tissues there's so many minerals in there you are depleted after a pregnancy and then if you're going to nurse as well on top of it that's a lot of work for your body all right and now i'm going to go into something else the postpartum healing kit because i think that is interesting in the sense that i've got some homeopathic suggestions for you to actually accelerate healing yes you know about the padsicles probably you know about the sitz baths maybe even you know about big granny panties i'm not going to go into all of that because the internet is filled with that i'm going to show you maybe what i've got but i'm going to focus on the things that i think you may not know about and that i consider healing essentials Alrighty, here's my big big box let's see let's see let's see you know what i'm just gonna grab a couple of things put it in the basket and show you all right ready definitely not pinteresty but uh everything that i will need i am sure so let me start with the actual kit this is what's going to go into my bathroom into the cupboard this is what i will be needing initially i ended up getting these net thingies that you can also often get in the hospital they're part of our postpartum kit that we get from our insurance here in the netherlands i i know that you can get like nicer looking underwear that is still cheap and that you can throw away but Honestly, I've got really nice black um, period underwear here, so I didn't really see a point. I thought for the heavy bleeding, we can just stick to this, and as soon as I'm able to change over to that, that's what I want to do. So this is what I will have initially. These are the pads that go in there. Once the bleeding gets a bit better, I will have these. Um, and these do contain plastic, I think. These are the ones I got from the insurance, so meh, that's not great. These are much better, organic cotton. But I have to be honest, guys, last time those <laughs> were so much more comfy and absorbent. So I'm still going to use those. And I got a follow-up for um, that are a bit more, you know, natural. <laughs> so you will see the Perry bottle, which is so common. And what I will do is when I use the peri bottle, I will put in warm water, not hot, and I will add in a couple of drops of Hypercal. Hypercal is Hypericum calendula, and this is a tincture of St. John's wort, and calendula is marigold, and they are amazing for healing of your skin and of your nerves, so that is really brilliant. I feel like this was the major thing that helped me recover last time so just a couple of drops i don't know what i do i just guesstimate and then i have some healing wool let me get the big bag i put a little bag in here this is healing wool it's just wool but it contains lanolin and that really helps heal any kind of skin irritation or wounds so that one is great also for your nipples. You can put it in your bra, but you can also put it in your undies. And what I like about this is I can then add this, Yoni Herbs. 
and you can see it's like a powder. You can just put it directly on your maternity pad and I can put it directly on the healing wool. So as I said, I will have this initially, but I hope to switch over to my washable pads soon. I've got a bunch of washable pads here, so they will then go into the basket and um, the, the period panties. And I have added a little mesh bag inside of here so that I can put those things in with the diaper wash and then it can be just thrown into the washer. Another thing that I would really recommend, and I'm not sure how I'm going to do it this time because this Yoni Herbs thing is new to me, but I really like the idea of that for healing. But what I did last time was I had just the Hypericum Calendula and then with coconut oil. And that's what I would apply after I got clean. And this was super, super helpful because it's antibacterial, it is healing, it is antimicrobial in general, so also antifungal. And that was really comforting. The other essential, I'd say, are your sitz baths. And you can do that in loads of different ways. And this is the way that I will do it. So you can either do it in a bath. If you have a bath, you can just sit in it. Or you can buy these special sit sitz baths that you can uh, put over the toilet. I will definitely invest in that if you don't have a bath. I will put in Epsom salts, which are great for uh, swelling and then I have these postpartum herbs and they again contain chamomile I didn't mention that one but marigold uh, rose Himalaya salt jasmine but it, those are fantastic for healing and then I will also put in calendula hypercar sorry hypericum and calendula in there for those sitz baths and the goal is to have two of those a day. Some people will just do the Epsom salts and then with lavender, that's great as well. The Hyperacum calendula isn't hard to get by. You can get it from any homeopathic pharmacy, but you can even get it from other places. Now what I haven't mentioned are the homeopathic remedies and um, that's because I'm not going to put those in this kit. I'm gonna put them with my nursing station, but I will tell you about them. <laughs> And that is, first of all, Arnica is your best, best, best friend. It's for bruising, it's for the wounds. And then there's Hypericum, which I've mentioned earlier already with the Hypercal. You can take that homeopathically as well. Um, that is for the nerves. And then there's Stavisegria. If you've had any issues, maybe you had an episiotomy or, you know, you went into hospital and you had some emotional experience that was traumatic that's always possible stephas is amazing for that calendula is in that mix but that is the most important one i would say homeopathically to take for healing of your entire body not just down there but also healing from the whole experience and also emotionally and if you're nursing your baby will get this as well so anything that they may be having any birth trauma that will be addressed for them as well. And now for the more fun kids. I mean, I think it's more fun. It's not as medical. <laughs> it's the nursing kit. So I'm not really going to make like a nursing station per se, but um, one drawer of my nightstand is going to be dedicated to anything we need for night feedings and night time changing. And um, last time I kept everything absolutely neutral because I didn't know I was going to have a boy or a girl. But this time I went for pink. Cause mama's a girl and mama likes pink. I just realized now how important it was to me at the time to surround myself with things that I love and that are pretty. So I also invested in new pajamas again and make sure that if you're nursing, that they are appropriate for nursing. So buttons or things you can pull down instead of you know pulling things up with your t-shirt. It's possible, but I did it a lot with Noel and now I'm thinking, there's an easier way. And when I said earlier that I bought things today that I probably didn't need, that's what I meant, the pink things. All right, so I've got my list right here for the things that are going to go in there. Um, I've got a bunch of compresses that I have gotten for free, pads for in your bra, but I also have a few washables. I didn't think those were very comfy last time. 
I, maybe I got the wrong ones, but uh, I, I will put them in there. But I've got some disposables right here. So those are going to go into the kit. And then of course, we're going to have our nipple creams. And I have tried so many over the past two years because nursing has been quite difficult. The ones that I love the most is by Lansino and Willita. So those are going to go in there. I like the lens snow because it's helped really keep things soft so that the latch is not as painful anymore. And I really like the Wilita one because it contains lanolin as well, but it isn't so thick and lanolin like that it stains your clothes, which I've had with others in the past. So those are my two favorites. Then we're going to put in some healing wool of course let's get a cute little baggie because again you can just take a little piece off and you can just pop it in your bra then i'm going to put in some nursing snacks well i don't have those yet but i will put them in it's hard to buy staples i think that are nourishing enough but if you can find things with oatmeal at least that will stimulate your breast milk production and um there are some other things that are high in protein. So those are the better choices, low sugar at least. But I am going to try and make a couple. Some lactation cookies. Mm. I'm not really up for it. I'm not really a baker. But I think I'd be so happy when I have them. Uh, and I'm probably just going to get some granola bars to be honest. It's not something that I'd be eating normally. But I think it's the best option for me at the moment. Then you may know that we do cloth diapering but last time Noel was so tiny he didn't fit into the clothes and into the diapers for a long time so I've got some little tiny disposables um, and they're as natural and organic and whatever as possible so we're gonna have those as well but yes, of course, we also have our cloth diapers, so I will put in um, a couple of those. These are like the muslins that you can fold. I think those are the most, most convenient probably for a newborn. I'm going to try that this time. I didn't do that last time. Last time I only had these, which are the pre-folds. And as you can see, they're pretty thick. They're pretty big to put in a diapy for a little newborn. So this might work better. So we're going to try that. And then these are the covers <laughs> okay they're not technically gonna go into my night nursing stand because we're going to use them if baby wears them again i don't know if i'm having a boy or girl because but nobody's really gonna see this if it's a boy and except for mama mama's gonna love it so these are much smaller than the ones i had before so let's see if baby fits into these and if not we're gonna have the disposables. It is what it is. Then of course, we're going to have some wipes as well. But honestly, the disposable wipes are pretty convenient. So I will have these, but for the night, I'm going to make it easier on myself as well. And that's what I bought this pink box for. Oh, I love it. So I've got here a, a little set of water wipes. I think I'm gonna use these for the bag though for the diaper bag because it's nice and small but I have another set here we go I have another set so I think we're going to put those in there oh all these cute little pink what if it is a girl it's gonna be extra cute so you might keep seeing the shot change and that's because <laughs> I'm doing loads of different things in between got Noel out of bed putting him into the bath I had to change out my card etc etc but I'm here and I'm still on track Okay, we were at the wipes, weren't we? And the diapies, we've got them in there. All right, and now what else? Let's take this big belly to the thing we need. Ooh, yes. The nipple covers. Let's have a look if I can find those. Uh, I can't find them right this instant, so I'll have to add in some footage when I do find them and then put them in my nursing set. What I do have right here is the potty that we'll be using for elimination communication. So we've got two. So I'll have one downstairs and one uh, in the nightstand. 
and I've got these elastic bands around them so that it doesn't slip away <laughs> from in between your legs but if you haven't seen that video I did a video on cloth diapering and elimination communication I will link that in I really love it and I wasn't sure if it was going to be great with Noel, but this time I know it's great, so I'm probably going to be doing it more. So who knows how much of the diapers I'm actually going to be needing, right? And then last but definitely not least is the homeopathic remedies, of course. So the remedies that are going to be in there, apart from the kit that I showed you earlier in this video, is chamomilla because chamomilla is fantastic for teething, but it's also great for baby belly cramps which they will get in the beginning because they are adapting to the the milk that they're getting so chamomile is fantastic for our really fussy screaming babies that have cramps then there's pulsatilla which is great for mom and baby it's great for those tears after birth and uh, for balancing out your hormones but it's great for those babies that are completely attached to you as well and cry a lot um, but it's also a fantastic remedy if you are having issues with your milk production. So if you need to produce more milk but uh, you're not able to, that is a good one. Especially if you have had a long labor that wasn't progressing very fast. My staple though for low milk production or just to encourage it is urtica urines. Uh, which is actually nettle. So a lot of women also drink nettle tea and I'm not sure what the rules on that is these days when you're nursing. But homeopathic remedies you can take completely safe. So that is a fantastic one. What I'm also going to put in my nightstand is this postpartum journal which I received from my insurance company which is really amazing because it's a Christian insurance company and they've made this really lovely book uh, for you to journal and to think about your birth and process it and with devotions in there so with Noel I didn't take time to do this so this time I am going to take time for that and ask Yurun and my postpartum doula to encourage me to do it because I think the uh, mental emotional spiritual healing is equally as important for the physical healing and this is the end result so here at the bottom is mostly the baby stuff the diapies and here are the nursing pads everything that I told you about I did find my nipple shields that's what they're called and I also actually put in here the baby nail file and the scissors because I've discovered that by the bed is usually when I discover that the nails are too long so there's the potty the wipes and then up here is the stuff that I am using at the moment as well. So we've got our books and we've got our air conditioning uh, remote and the remote for the bed. And then I've got my night essentials and here are mostly the nipple cream stuff. And this is where the rest of the homeopathic remedies will be that I told you about as well. And back here is a little music box. This used to be my dad's, so it's a nice heirloom. And uh, it's soothing to know, and I bet it will be for the baby as well. So as I was editing this video, I realized there was something that I had missed, and I was kind of doubting if I was going to put it in because it's already so long. But I think it's pretty essential because it is about postpartum healing, having a toddler already. What I have done for this postpartum is plan a lot in advance of what to do with him <laughs> and how to keep the daily routine going. Because of course, as a mama, you're so used to doing so many different things at the same time, things that you do every day, things that you do every week. And you don't want to have people coming to your bed and constantly asking you, oh, what else shall we do, blah, 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 blah. So I love following the fly lady system as it is. So I have a weekly routine and I have a daily routine. And what I did is just adapt those for the postpartum period and included a Noel's schedule basically. And I have printed off 15 of the dailies. I know it's a lot of paper, but I thought it would be just easier. And those can just go on the table and Yerun and my mom and uh, my postpartum doula and any visitors that can come around will be able to look at the list and 
just pick anything to do. And of course, there are a couple of things that will be typical for uterine or typical for the postpartum doula, but there are also things on the list like water the plants or maybe vacuum the ground floor or walk Dee Dee or comb Dee Dee, you know, something like that. And that is something that a visitor can do. If they come around to see the baby and have some bubbly or some coffee and some uh, treats, then they usually will ask, is there anything you, I can do for you? And it's hard to think of something in the moment. So it's better to have something ahead of time. So they can just check that off. And this way Noah will have his routine as much as possible. And um, the whole household will keep on going so that there's not a whole amount of work. Uh, when I am able to get up and get downstairs and then freak out. And then what I've also done is made two activity boxes, one for Dee Dee and one for Noel. So when visitors come around, they don't necessarily have to do like a house chore or, well, they don't have to do anything. But if they ask, they can do something like that or they can spend some extra time on Noel or on Dee Dee. So with Noel, they can play with Play-Doh or do a puzzle or do some drawing. And Dee Dee can also do little games she has. And uh, just knowing that my two first babies are going to get the extra attention that I'm not able to give will be super helpful. Also, we've made sure that I have a tablet in my room so that Noah can just snuggle up with us and watch Kokomelon until he cracks. I really don't care as long as he's happy and he feels like he's still part of the nest. So I hope you found this helpful. And if there's anything that I didn't mention that is such an essential for healing, for you or in the past, definitely let me know that as well because other women are reading the comments and they will benefit. And in the meantime, see you in the next video. Bye!